myself. <laughs> Let me say I have a confession to make. New York Magazine voted me as one of the 100 smartest people in New York. But I have a confession to make. You see, in all fairness, I have to admit that Madonna also made that same list. <laughs> so how authoritative can that list be? Now, I'm a physicist. We invented the laser. We invented the transistor. We created the computer. We wrote the World Wide Web. We created the satellite, the space program, the GPS, MRI, x-rays. We created television. We created radio. And now we are creating the next 20, 50, the next 100 years. We physicists love to make predictions. We can predict the universe out to billions of years. Let me quote from that great philosopher of the Western world, Woody Allen. <laughs> Woody Allen once said, quote, Eternity is an awful long time, especially toward the end. <laughs> Let me quote from that other great philosopher of the Western world, the baseball player Yogi Berra. He once said, quote, Prediction is awfully hard to do, especially if it's about the future. <laughs> well, today, I'm going to predict the future. I've interviewed over 300 of the world's top scientists to give you the best prediction of the future. Now, sometimes we physicists can make a mistake. When we physicists created the Internet, one physicist made a prediction. He predicted that the internet would become a forum of high culture, high art, and high society. Today we know that 5% of the internet is pornography. But that's because teenage boys log on to the internet. Just wait until the grandmas and grandpas get on the internet then 50% of the internet will be pornography. <laughs> Before I begin, let me tell you a short story of what happened over 200 years ago in Paris, France. There was the great French Revolution. And one day, there were three gentlemen about to have their heads cut off at the guillotine. There was a priest, a lawyer, and a theoretical physicist, just like me, about to have our heads chopped off. Well, they asked the priest, do you have any last words before we cut your neck? And the priest said, yes. He said, God, God from above shall set me free. Well, all eyes were on the blade. They raised the blade. The blade came down, swish, and it stopped right before it hit the neck of the priest. Well, the mob had never seen this before. And so the mob said, let him go. God has spoken today. And now let's see about the lawyer. Well, they put the lawyer's head on the chopping block and they asked him, do you have any last words before we cut your head off? And the lawyer said, yes. He said, the spirit of justice, justice shall set me free. Well, they raised the blade. The blade came down, swish, and stopped right before it hit the neck of the Lord. Well, this time, there was dancing in the streets of Paris. People were saying, God has spoken. Justice has spoken today. And now let's see about the physicist. Well, they put the physicist's head on the chopping block. And they asked him, do you have any last words before we cut your head off? And the physicist said, yeah, yeah, I got some last words. And he said, you know, I don't know too much about God. And I know even less about the law. But I do know one thing. If you look up, you'll see that the rope 
is stuck on the pulley. <laughs> and then he said, if you remove the rope, the blade should come down real good. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> Big mistake. The rope came down, the blade came down, and the poor physicist's head came down. And the lesson is, sometimes we physicists have to know when to keep our mouth shut. <laughs> but nonetheless, let me now... of the impossible, starships, warp drive, antimatter engines, time travel, all of that, now a TV series on the Science Channel. Have you seen the program, Sci-Fi Science on the Science Channel? A few of you have, right? It's on the Science Channel. My book is now a TV series on the Science Channel, Physics of the Impossible. So let's begin a discussion of the future. Some people say, how can you predict the future when nobody predicted the crash of 2008? How good are your predictions? Well, let me tell you this. Science is the engine of prosperity. Science is the origin of wealth. But science comes in waves. Therefore, wealth also comes in waves. So the first wave of science was the steam engine. In the 1800s, the steam power engine gave us the locomotive. The locomotive gave us wealth, fantastic wealth. The wealth of the industrial revolution. Factories, locomotives, steam power, engines, and that fabulous wealth had to go someplace. And where did that wealth go? The London Stock Exchange. All that wealth created a bubble, a huge bubble that popped in 1850. That was the first great crisis of capitalism. The crash of 1850, created because science created the steam engine, which created wealth which went to the London Stock Exchange, creating a bubble which popped. This is the origin of Marxism. Karl Marx wrote against capitalism because of the crash of 1850. But time marches on. The next great invention was electricity, the gasoline-fired car, the automobile. That created fantastic wealth of the 1920s. Where did that wealth from science go? It went to Wall Street. Utility stocks, electric stocks, automobile stocks created a huge bubble on the American Stock Exchange. And what happened? It collapsed in 1929. The crash of 1929 was created because of the wealth of science went into the American Stock Exchange, creating a bubble. Now you would think we would learn a lesson. No. What happened recently? The wealth of the last several decades was the wealth of high technology. Lasers, internet, transistors, computers, GPS, space program. And where did that wealth go? Into real estate. And when did it pop? three years ago. If this is correct, then roughly every 80 years, science creates a wave which creates wealth. Wealth creates a bubble which pops. So your grandchildren may experience the crash of 2090. That could be the next great crash of capitalism. So then the big question is, the question that I, I will ask today is, if the first wave was steam power, the second wave was electricity, the third wave was computers and high technology, what is the fourth wave? This 
is the biggest question facing science today. Steam power, electricity, computers gave us fantastic wealth. What is the fourth wave? Well, I don't know. But we think it's a combination of biotechnology, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, and telecommunications. So let's now talk about the fourth wave. First of all, there's Moore's Law. Moore's Law says the computer power doubles every 18 months. Today, if you get a birthday card in the mail, you open it up, and there's a chip inside. And it sings, happy birthday to you. What do you do with that card? You throw it in the garbage. That chip has more computer power than all the Allied forces of 1945. Hitler, Stalin, Eisenhower, Churchill would have killed to get that chip in your birthday card. But what do you do? You throw it in the garbage. Your cell phone today has more computer power than all of NASA in 1969 when they put two men on the moon. This curve on a log chart shows that computers are going to be a thousand times more powerful in 2020 than today. So we now know what the future of chips and computers are. Chips will cost one penny in 2020, according to Moore's Law. Chips will be everywhere and nowhere. Where is electricity today? Electricity is underneath our feet. Electricity is in the ceiling. Electricity is in the walls. Electricity is invisible. It is everywhere and nowhere. And how do we pay for electricity? We meter it. Computers are next. The word electricity has pretty much disappeared from the English language. Nobody says electricity anymore. The same thing with computers. The future of computers is to disappear. The word computer will disappear from the English language. Chips will cost a penny. They'll be everywhere and nowhere and we will meter it. How do we meter computer power? In the cloud. So you now know the future of the computer. And then after 2020, all this will collapse. Moore's Law cannot go on forever. We will enter the post-Silicon era. Silicon Valley could become a rust belt after 2020. I'll talk about that in a moment. So, let's talk about the future. Every decade, a new revolution in computers. The internet, a magic mirror. So where will the internet be in the future? In the coming years, the internet will be in your glasses. You will have full internet capability in your glasses. When you meet somebody, your glasses will recognize who they are. And as you look at somebody, their biography will appear next to their name. And if they speak to you in Chinese, you will see subtitles as you speak to somebody. You will always know who they are. You will always know what they're talking about. So in the future, if you're looking for a job at a cocktail party, and you don't know who the important people are, in the future, you will know exactly who to suck up to at any cocktail party. <laughs> also, if you meet somebody today, you say, who is this person? I know him. Jim, John, Chick, I know this person. Who is this person? In the future, your classes will say, it's Jim, stupid. <laughs> Remember, we met him last year at last year's event. Well, maybe you don't want to look like a refugee from Star Trek. In the future, they'll be fashionable. Children will buy these things. Children are the engine behind this. This image will be beamed to the retina of your eye. 
This is the future of email, the future of telecommunications, fashion models.